Nazi kills. I'm retired. I'm sitting in a house I made in my imagination years ago that now is real. On the walls are posters from the Harvard strike in 1969 I saved for their designs and then forgot about. And now they're here. Stop Harvard expansion. Strike for the eight demands. And then the best of all, in small red letters with three red bayonets, ROTC kills, pronounced Rotsi kills. From here inside, time seems unreal. I'm back in graduate school. But then the mind ascends and time becomes objective. I myself again, at home again, in 64. The particulars of a life the pattern of a life. These are the poles the mind in the guise of a poem floats back and forth between. The commolation, the deflating sigh. The trees are tossing in the wind. The leaves unfurl their silvery undersides. The soft clouds <coughs> drift across the sky. Time may be an abstraction but it makes the days go by, the days I never thought I'd see, when the music of the 60s lost its way, became too faint to hear, the voices <coughs> fell away, and then it all came down to me. What were those eight demands? I can't recall to save my life. I lived there, I breathed that air, and sometimes some of it drifts back to me. You should join PL, Paul said as we were sitting in the lounge. Picketing the GE plant in Lynn didn't much appeal to me, so I just said it seemed too hard to square with being married and finishing my degree. Yes, that's what's so great about it, he replied as I rolled my eyes. Or Johnny Supak's plan to hold the chairman Rogers Albritton, hostage in his office. The kids are stealing underwear from Filene's basement, asking for the Red Army. Where's the Red Army, they're asking. It felt so all-important at the time, in a surreal way. The endless back and forths, the forums, teach-ins, meetings and analyses, strategic planning sessions. But, but that would be capitulationism. <laughs> and look at what it came to. I didn't even vote in 1968. Chicago was too fresh. But on election night, I found myself nostalgic for the hump. Only by then it was too late. It's nice to think it might have made a difference. But that's just wishful thinking. Money finds a way. And if it wasn't Nixon... Too much has gone to be restored. And as for money equals speech, it's a joke. The silence in what people used to call the streets is deafening. All talk is on the radio, as money quietly wraps its hands around the country's throat. I wonder what Larry, my general contractor, Jeff, my carpenter, Jerry, who occasionally did the plumbing, made of all the posters. They couldn't be more friendly, but Wisconsin's a peculiar state. La Follette's versus Tail Gunner Joe, the sewer socialist mayors of Milwaukee, and the park where Hitler lovers rallied. I'm not sure I could explain them in a way they'd understand. See, there were these demands. But then there's Mitch, the landscape guy, whose countercultural compulsion to explain is straight from Paul and Johnny. It's beautiful out here. I feel alive and out of it. From the aisles of the Piggly Wiggly, the world of variety, to the steps of the unique cafe, the shells of Gasser hardware. Driving through the vast obscurity beyond the city, it suddenly seems so clear that the clarity is probably deceptive 
as clarity often is. Beyond the signs for prefab homes, I bought one. Pro-life billboards with a baby floating in what looks like amniotic fluid. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Madmen on the radio denouncing Baptists and Freemasons. Why the streams, the rivers, the steep on glaciated hills. You couldn't climb them, would you want to? But it's comforting to know they're there. We live in different dream worlds, wandering through a wilderness of words, while the real story writes itself in silence. It's 40 years ago. It's yesterday. And when I try to think of what those posters represent, I realize they're footnotes, surface irritants that left the underlying language undisturbed. Their meaning is the interval between the times of then and now the times of looking forward and of drifting back. They flash upon that inward eye, and then they're gone. I'm sitting in a room. I'm looking at the trees. I'm sure if this is something other than another version of The Big Chill, the movie I despise. I hope it is. I saw Paul not too long ago. He's mellow. Everyone is mellowed. Mellow is a word for disappointed. The 60s had their charms, but patience and contentment weren't among them. It was a brief, imaginary time, swept along by anthems and guitar heroes. When tomorrow had arrived, the air was filled with specious possibilities. All the demands were just. The kids kept calling for the Red Army, and Rotsi killed.